One acoustic device is gaining ground daily by being law enforcement's go-to choice for crowd control scenarios and search and rescue missions. That device is LRAD. I'm Terry Shepard, and this is Digital Justice. Robert, first question. What does LRAD stand for? Long range acoustic device. Robert Putnam with LRAD Corporation gives the lowdown on this piece of popular yet contentious technology. With the long range acoustic device systems, we're able to be able to project voice messages and alarm tones up to distances over to two miles. It stays focused in a 30 to 60 degree beam, and by allowing us to do that, the people at the other end absolutely understand the instructions that are being given them, and we can give them the instructions in any language. We have a highly intelligible, very robust product now that's being sold throughout the world to militaries, commercial security, maritime security, and then also for uh, wildlife protection and control. And for law enforcement, they appreciate having a device that really works for communication. Bullhorns just don't cut it in large outdoor situations especially. So how did this technology come about? The genesis of LRAD really begins with the attack on the USS Cole in October of 2000. Here was a USS destroyer in a Yemeni port. They didn't know if it were fishermen or terrorists that were yep. pulling along inside them until it was too late. They turned out to be terrorists, detonated, killed... And we know uh, what happened. Yeah, we killed, yeah, bad. killed many sailors, injured others, caused a billion dollars of damage to the boat. And they had all this firepower on board, but they didn't know who these people were, so they couldn't take any action. Well, the whole point with LRAD is it fills a critical gap. How do we determine if they're friendlies or not, if they're not responding to radio calls? Right. When I got in front of the device, I could immediately hear its effectiveness. This is a test of a long-range acoustic device, LRAD. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, guys, I have to say, I'm a little worried walking up here like you're going to sneak in and turn it back on. <laughs> Scott, you were the operator on that one. Yes, Thank sir. you. Right off the bat, first impression, I felt like there was a dude standing right here yelling in my ear, but it was really clear. Here you have the back of the head unit where all the electronics are housed. You got the power switch you turn on. Power is activated by the control unit, which you have an on-off position. Right. This is a standard MP3 player, so you can put whatever test files or any kind of uh, audio uh, media really? on the okay, Sampy 3 okay. pair. You will be given food, water, and medical attention. Because it can broadcast effectively up to two miles away and very powerfully, you can mount it on helicopters, fly over and be able to broadcast messages to hopefully the people that you're trying to find. Cover a lot of area quickly rather than putting, in some cases, hundreds of people on the ground right. in the bushes trying to find people. And then for suicide situations from bridges or buildings, fire departments and high-rise situations. It can also be used more in a, in a bit of an offensive or a defensive uh, manner. Well, how does that work for that? Well, I think you're referring to our alarm tone capability of right. this. So that's what's gotten most of the interest from people out there right. on the other side. We really don't uh, look at this as any kind of a weapon, non-lethal or otherwise. And though reluctant to speak on camera, law enforcement officials stand behind LRAD. The alarm tone is mostly used, especially in law enforcement applications, especially when protests get out of control or you get large crowds. And with LRAD, that fills that critical gap between bullhorns and rubber bullets. But many groups, including the ACLU, have issues with LRAD. I think LRAD has no place at public events and forums, especially ones that uh, any free speech uh, expression activity is too intimidating, it's too scary. And, and so chills speech that we want to encourage in a democracy. Are these machines causing any harmful side effects of the eardrums and the senses? Some would say it is possible that they are. So that would be considered torture. My wife had one used on her in Oakland. It was like a kind of psychological torture. <laughs> like it's in your brain and you can't and you can't think, you can't move. I'd rather be tased, shot with a rather a rubber bullet, maced, and then kicked in the balls then have my eardrums erupted. Like anything else, if it's too loud, like a fire siren or a police siren, you put your hands over your ears. Right. 
By doing that, it cuts 25 dB of sound pressure level instantly. You can still hear it, you can still understand it, but it's not gonna hurt your hearing. Right. It's just a different thing to have this you know, magical voice being beamed at you or even bringing you down. You know, traditional uh, public order policing um, has its value. Well, I think, I think you have some people out there, especially uh, during protest situations, who view this as, hey, this is not allowing us to protest or do what we want. We know of one case in, re in regards to the Pittsburgh G20 summit where Elrod was deployed. By order of the city of Pittsburgh chief police, I hereby declare this to be an unlawful assembly. And I think that was the first time that a police department had used LRAD in a high profile event. And what they were interested in is keeping the property damage down and the number of arrests down. That's the bottom line of right. LRAD. It's the ability to use long range, powerful, highly intelligible communication to resolve uncertain situations peacefully, to determine intent, and potentially save lives on both sides of the long range of consumer device. The guys, that was a really actually great demo. Thank you. And maybe could I borrow this for a party? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> there you have it. In the eyes of law enforcement, LRAD is an effective tool that's use will certainly continue to spread. But in the eyes of others, it's a potential weapon just waiting to be abused. No matter the opinion, it looks like LRAD is here to stay. I'm Terry Shepard, and this has been Digital Justice.